Hi, I'm George Fraser, CEO of FraserNet Incorporated. I watch Spot TV, and you should be watching it as well. I'm the author of Success Runs in Our Race, The Complete Guide to Effective Networking in the Black Community, and the producer of the Power Networking Conference in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Atlanta Marriott Marquis, June 9th through the 11th. Please visit us at the Power Networking Conference and take your career, take your business to the next level. You keep doing God's work and stay the course. Now, in the context of what I'm going to be saying to you, I promise you two things. And first thing I promise you is that I will not be saying anything that you have not heard before. Okay? Except this morning you're going to hear it differently. Understanding that everything happens for a reason that serves us in some special way. You will never understand that reason to be forward. You will only understand it looking backwards. So God has given you the power and the glory and the wisdom and the energy to be sitting in this place at this moment in time. And whoever is sitting next to you is supposed to be sitting next to you. There's an empty seat next to you that's supposed to be empty. Great Swiss psychologist Carl Jung, J U N G, called this phenomenon synchronicity, the seemingly accidental intermission of meaningless circumstances. What he discovered in his life's work, Mr. Dudley, is that there are no meaningless circumstances, that you are always where you're supposed to be. Good, bad, or good. So, no, I will not be saying anything you haven't heard before, but this morning you're going to hear it differently. Understanding that the, when the students are ready, the teachers will appear. The second thing I promise you, as I mentioned earlier, is when Elizabeth Taylor promised her eight husbands. That is, I will not be keeping you long. But you know that content without context is pretense. So let me put what I'm going to say to you in some context. Every time. I prepare for a talk. I customize it for the audience. But I go to the Bible first. There are three passages in the Bible that are the cornerstones, the pillars of my talks. First is a not often quoted passage. I want you to write it down. John 5 30. I want you to read the entire passage when you get home in the evening. John 5 30. And Jesus said, I, of my own self, can do nothing. Now this is Jesus. And he couldn't get it done on his own, by himself, in a vacuum. So what's up with you? Why would you think that you could do anything significant, anything worth talking about, on your own, by yourself, in a vacuum? It is not possible, brothers and sisters. In fact, if you have a dream that you can achieve by yourself, then you do not have a dream that is big enough because it takes teamwork to make the dream right. This passage says to me that we were born to network, that we were born to collaborate, that we were born to work with and through each other. And until such time as we as people of color learn that, we will continue to wander into the desert. To understand that freedom is not free. That it is harder to be free than to be enslaved. Why? Because now you must organize. Now you must collaborate. Now you must love yourself so that you can love each other. Now you must work with and through each other. And this is harder than being a slave, being told what to do every minute of your life. This is hard. And this is why the Israelites, when freed from the Pharaoh, had to wander in the desert until they understood that freedom is not free. And it requires responsibility and connectivity. So this passage says that. The second passage is Proverbs 27:17. As iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. Be careful who your friends are. Introduce me to your five closest friends and that will tell me who you are. As they know and as they go, you go. We'll put a pin in that and pick up on that in a moment. And then finally, Ecclesiastes 10, 19, and money answers all things. And money answers all things. Just a moment regarding phrasing. 
what we have been doing for a quarter of a century. Who we are. CrazyNet is a principal center global leadership network of 51,000 top that professionals and business owners in the community. We are focused on economic development through education, training, and empowerment for black people. Now, you didn't hear what you thought you heard. We are not necessarily a black man. I said that we are focused on economic development through education, training, and empowerment for black people. I didn't say you had to be black to be in our network. If you're committed to economic development through education, training, and empowerment for black people, we don't care what color you are. So there's several thousand of those that do not who are deeply committed to helping us to get where we need to get. Our focus is to train, to educate, and to equip black people with new skills, new thinking, and new approaches for personal, professional, and financial success in the 21st century. We're working on two very simple goals. We've been working on these goals for a quarter of a century. We will work on these goals for the next 100 years because it will take three to five generations to achieve these goals. First goal, to help black people build wealth that can be transferred intergenerationally. That is not to say that we do not have wealth. We're not poor, we're just broke. Our money goes in one direction away from us. We're some of America's most conspicuous consumers. We've taken the art of consumption to a whole new level. We're a $920 billion annual economy, brothers and sisters. If we were a nation, we would be the 11th richest nation in the entire world. Let me dimensionalize $920 billion. You can take 48 countries in sub-Saharan Africa, including Madagascar on the east and the Cape Verde Islands on the west. Combine their gross domestic product, every single thing they produce in those countries. And it would not equal the $920 million that we bring to the table of America in a single year. You can take the 17 richest countries in the Caribbean, combine their gross domestic product, everything they produce, add it to the continent of Africa, and it would not equal the $920 billion that we bring to the table. You think all of the oil producing countries are wealthy with their oil revenues? They're very wealthy. But according to the Sunday New York Times, you can take every single country in OPEC producing a single drop of oil, combine all of their revenues, and it would not equal the $920 billion that we bring to the table in a single year. According to the Sunday New York Times, all oil producing countries in the entire world produce $750 billion of revenue a year. We bring to the table of America $920 billion. So it ain't even close. But have you been to Dubai lately? Have you been to Abu Dhabi lately? You see what they do with oil revenue? So we have money. There was an interesting article in USA Today six months ago. I hope you read it. It was on the front page of USA Today, the most read newspaper in America. The article was about black people. Yes, it was about black people and their money. And here's what they said about this. That we, they people, will be the first generation and the only generation to raise another generation of black people that will be worse off than us. Yeah. So in the 400 yeah, year sure. history of Africans in America, we are the only generation to raise another generation that will be worse off. We need our behinds, kid. And you can count me out of that. I will not contribute to that statistic. Those in the PhraseNet network and the Watchful network will not participate in that statistic. We must fix this in the 21st century. We have money. So that is our goal. We've been working on that goal for 25 years. We produce a conference every year in Atlanta. The date is June 9th through the 11th. It's not the date that's on the flyer that you have. June 9th through the 11th. June 9th through the 11th. We want you to come to this conference. The most 
thoughts come to you will ever attend in your life, I promise you, you come to the conference, you will be a changed Negro. The second goal that we are working on, and the reason I'm here, the reason that Tyrone and Ruta and I have an affinity for each other, because they're working on the same thing in their way, is to make black people the number one employer of black people in the 21st century. Now you notice I said 21st century. You notice I didn't say next week, I didn't say next year, I didn't say three years from now, I didn't even say while I'm alive. I said in the 21st century. Why? Because we must create work and jobs for our people. Because that is the only way to raise up the poor. As every immigrant group that has ever come to this country has understood that for black people. As Jews are the number one employer of Jews, as Asians are the number one employer of Asians, as East Indians who control the motel industry are the number one employer of East Indians, as Arabs are the number one employer of Arabs, we too must become the number one employer of our own people. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, wherever black people are going in the 21st century, it will be because black people will take them there. If I'm building, if I'm a European or an Asian, I'm building a business, who am I going to employ first? My children, my family, my extended family, people that I am comfortable with. That's what I'm going to employ first, if you got any damn sense. And whatever is left over, depending on the level of skills you might have, you might get the job. But I'm employing my own first. If you go into a black business today with 20, 30, 40, 50 people, and you see that 90 or 95, 98% uh, of those people do not look like the person that owned the business, kick them in the ass. That's crazy. Why would you start a business and not employ your own and then complain to others about not being able to hire us and you ain't hiring us? What's up with that? So, it's one of the things I love about Mr. Dudley, Mr. Mr. Ray, they've been talking about that for years, they've been talking about it, doing it! It's true, it's true. John Johnson with Ebony and Jet Magazine did it! Black Enterprise Magazine, the Earl Graves and his son are doing it. And the most successful businesses in our community look at the BE100. Most of the people employed in those businesses look like the people that own those businesses. Not everybody, but most. Duh. Do I have to explain this? I don't have to explain this. I know we're in a mixed company, but I don't care because I'm leaving in an hour. You do. So those are the two things they're working on. We're working on. What am I saying to you? I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, that we have every single thing that we need to succeed except each other. I just explained to you we have money. We would be the 11, 10th, 11th richest nation in the entire world of the nation. We have brain power. We can just take care of it. From my generation alone, the baby boomers. We alone have amassed over 500 billion hours of formal education and professional training in one generation alone. If you wanted to put a dollar value on that, Let's just value it at 10 bucks an hour. We'll try to get an education with professional training for 10 bucks an hour. But let's be real conservative for the sake of discussion. That would mean that our collective intellectual capital base for one generation of baby boomers is worth in excess of five trillion dollars. So we have brain problems. We have surpassed the baby boomers' dream. Remember his dream 90 years ago? If at least 10% of the time, black people in America could get the finest education possible in their college education. We would then get that education, we would then come back to our communities, invest in our communities, and that 10% alone will uplift the entire race. Yeah. 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 Nearly 19% of black people in America have at least a four-year college degree or better. So we have surpassed the boys' dream by 90%. Said another way, we have a lot of PhDs in our community. We now need some PhDs. Yeah. So we have education, we have brain power. 